Assalamu alaikum dear students, uh, welcome to 10 Fathom Technology, uh, lecture number 4. Uh, I'm Dr. Pervez Ahmed and this section uh, we will discuss about the vacuum technology. I mean, uh, first we will have a little bit of introductions about the vacuum, that what is vacuums and what are the kind of apparatus that has been uh, utilized for creating the vacuums and what are the apparatus that is being utilized for measuring the vacuums and what for we are uh, really need the vacuums and thin film technology. So uh, here are the few books that uh, you will have to consult uh, if you are interested uh, and looking in further details of the, the lecture. So uh, please refer to the following books that is we have books uh, with the titles Handbooks of Vacuum Science and Technology by D. M. Hoffman, B. Singh, Jaj Thomas, uh, Academic Press 1998 and uh, along with that we have a very useful book that is a user guide to vacuum technology by Jeff for uh, and launch uh, uh, while entered science 2003 and uh, you can also uh, I mean if you're further interested to have further details on the uh, vacuum science and vacuum technology so you better to consult a book high vacuum technology a practical guide by H. Uh, uh, Marcel uh, Decker uh, uh, that's been published in 1997. So these are some of the recommended books uh, if you are interested to learn further about the vacuum technology. So better to consult uh, these books. Let's uh, let's come towards the lectures. Uh, that is, uh, you can see uh, the diagram here, uh, and uh, you might have probably aware, or you probably might have seen this in the earlier courses. That is the courses of the basic sciences when you are in enters or MSc classes. So uh, I, I assume that you people have seen this kind of apparatus in your previous uh, physics or chemistry classes. So let's first come toward the basic definition of the vacuum. The people have a question in mind here, what is a vacuum? So let's have a formal definition for the vacuum. A vacuum is defined as less than one atmospheric of pressure. Let me uh, define it again. A vacuum is defined as less than one atmospheric of pressure. Now the question is, what is one atmosphere? So one atmosphere is a pressure that is equal to 10 raised to the power 5 Pascal, which is equal to 10 raised to the power 3 millibar, which is equal to 760 uh, torr. I mean, this is the, uh, I mean, it's how the, the different unit of pressures, they are being related with uh, one and others. I mean, first we have the definition of the vacuum, and then we have uh, some of the most frequently used uh, units for uh, the vacuum. So, below 10 raised to power minus 3 torr, there are more gas molecules on the surface of the vessel than in the volume uh, of the vessels. So, high vacuums, whenever we are utilizing the, the terminologies for the high vacuum, so it means that we have vacuum uh, that is smaller than 10 raised to power minus 3 torr. I mean that is, I mean the, a particular unit for uh, or the definition for the high vacuum. I mean whenever we mean high vacuum, so it should have pressure uh, less than 10 raised to power minus uh, 3 torr. Similarly, if we utilizing the terminology very high vacuum. So by very high vacuum, we mean that smaller than the va uh, a vacuum smaller than 10 raised to power minus uh, 6 star. And if we are, we, we are saying that the vacuum is ultra high vacuum, uh, so what it would mean? It would mean that we have vacuum uh, is smaller than 10 raised to power uh, minus 8 uh, star. So the questions, uh, whenever we, we, are, we are studying vacuum and uh, thin film cores, so uh, we, we have a question in mind that why do we need a vacuum? That is the question which almost every MPhil or PhD students they have in mind. Uh, I mean, while dealing with thin film technology, and we say that we need a vacuum. So they have a question in mind that why do we need a vacuum? So let's try to find an answer for these questions. That is, we need a vacuum for what? To keep the surface free of contaminants. That is, we want to have a high quality surface. I mean, that's why we need a vacuum to keep the surfaces free of the uh, contaminants. You know that 
basically when we deposit the thin film so a thin film is basically a layer of the materials on a substrate surface so if you want to keep the surface free of contaminants so for that uh, we basically need a vacuum so uh, we also need a vacuum to process film uh, with low density of impurity i mean if you want to have low impurity or you want to eliminate the impurity and the process or in the final product so uh, for that particular purpose uh, we need a vacuum that is we have to evacuate the system uh, if we do the process for thin film deposition so in that we have to evacuate the system or we have to create the vacuum and the result of that thing would be that we have to overcome the impurity i mean uh, we are most likely interested in the impurity free environment and that can only be achieved with the uh, i mean uh, when we have a vacuum inside the system and we need a vacuum to mean to maintain plasma discharge for sputtering source I mean, when we are trying to operate the sputtering process or the sputtering source, so for that we need uh, a vacuum. Uh, and we also need a vacuum for large main free path for electrons and molecules. And uh, the large main uh, free path, that is lambda is equal to 1 uh, meter at uh, 7 into 10 to the power minus 5 uh, millibar. So, uh, main free path for air. It uh, 20 degrees centigrade uh, is equal to uh, 7 and 10 to the power minus 3 uh, centimeter per uh, millibar. So that 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 is uh, something uh, very short uh, for uh, the uh, for the questions. That is why uh, we need the uh, vacuum. Uh, let's come to another rele relevant topic. Uh, that is uh, mono layer time. So what is mono layer uh, mono layer time? So uh, we define uh, we define the mono layer time we define the mono layer time is the time for one atomic layer of gas to absorb uh, to absorb on the surface just like you can see it here uh, we have uh, different gas molecules. I mean here you can see it here in this particular uh, diagram and this particular process and this is a surface this is a particular surface of particular materials uh, so uh, what is the mono layer time so mono layer time uh, according to uh, proper definitions we define it as uh, the time for one atomic layers I mean here you can see that I mean uh, the layer has been in the formations process i mean uh, the formations of layers uh, has been in progress so here we define uh, the monolayer time as the time for one atomic layer of gas to adsorb on the surface that is we denoted by tau which is equal to 1 divided by xza now what is xza uh, that we uh, we, uh, we will define it later on uh, in this particular uh, discussion let's proceed further with this uh, uh, with this mono layer time so at uh, 3 and 10 raised to power minus 5 tor it take about one second for a mono layers of gas to observe to adsorb on its surface assuming a stacking coefficients s is equal to 1 so in this particular equations uh, S is basically uh, the stacking uh, coefficients. So let me repeat it again. We have the process like you can see it here at a pressure that is uh, our at a vacuum that is 3 into 10 raised to the power minus 5 tor. It takes about one second for a mono layer of gas to adsorb on a surface assuming a stacking coefficients S is equal to 1. So at a vacuum that is 10 raised to the power minus 9 tau it take about one hour to form a mono layer for s is equal to 1 similarly for most cases at room temperature that is s is very very small than 1 so the mono layer time is much longer i mean from here on uh, you can calculate or you can assume for yourself 
that how I mean the, the monolayer process it can be accelerated or it can be uh, decelerated depend upon these particular parameter that is uh, stacking coefficients and the other two parameters uh, that we will discuss now. I mean uh, the stacking coefficients. Uh, what is the stacking? Uh, the stacking coefficients. The stacking coefficient that we uh, denote by S is equal to the number of adsorbs gas molecules or the materials divided by uh, the number of incident particles. That is basically the ratio between the adsorb uh, the adsorbed gas molecules are uh, and the incident molecules that we call the stacking uh, coefficients. Uh, then we have the impinging rates for the air that we denoted by Z and I mean just like you can see it here uh, this that is basically for the impen uh, impingement rate for the air and that is equal to uh, 3 into 10 raised to power 20 Pascal R uh, tor per centimeter square uh, per second. I mean the impingement rate for the air. Uh, area, area of a, uh, area of an uh, adsorption site is a is equal to uh, one angstrom square, which is equal to 10 raised to the power uh, minus 16 uh, centimeter square. So now uh, you can have, uh, I mean the uh, the full definitions of monolayer time. So, how we define the monolayer time? We define the monolayer time as the time for one atomic layer of gas to observe on the surface. That we denote it by tau, and it is equal to 1 divided by SZA. S is for stacking coefficients, Z is for impingement rate for the air, and A is the area of an adsorption site. So this is, I mean, the full definition of monolayers uh, time. So uh, what is the vacuum system? I mean, we are studying the vacuum technology. So what is a vacuum system? So a vacuum system basically, uh, a vacuum system basically consists of what? Uh, a vacuum system uh, basically uh, consists of a chamber, pump, and gauges. I mean uh, the chamber is basically the, the place uh, where we basically put the material or where we synthesize and prepare the materials. Pumps are the vacuum pumps they are normally needed to create the vacuum inside the chamber while gauges they are basically the apparatus which is being utilized to measure the as produce, uh, as produced vacuum or it's been the, uh, it's the apparatus uh, which is uh, being utilized for measuring the uh, required vacuum uh, inside the chamber. So chamber are typically made of glass or stainless steel and sealed with the elastometer or metal uh, gasket. I mean uh, this is uh, the chamber, definition of the chamber, that what is called a chamber or what are the material from which the chamber are being made. So chambers are typically made of glass or uh, stainless steel uh, and sealed with the elastometers or metal gaskets. I mean this is basically something about the uh, chamber. Pumping uh, pump uh, basically include mechanical pump, turbomolecular pump, diffusions, ion sublimation and cryogenic pump. I mean these are the different kinds of the vacuum pump depend upon the type and the range of the vacuum and also about the process I mean uh, which particular process you are being employed and what kind of vacuum uh, I mean up to which range of the vacuum you are being required for running that particular process depend upon or on need. So gauges basically include uh, thermocouples uh, gauges thermocouple for uh, I mean it goes for uh, uh, 1 to 10 raised to power minus 3 millibar and they are alphabet for 10 raised to power 3 to 10 raised to power minus 11 bar millibar. I mean these are the typical uh, I mean the apparatus that has been utilized for measuring the uh, the vacuum uh, inside the chamber or inside uh, uh, I mean the different devices where, where we need the vacuum. Pressure ranges, 
so pressure range is basically i mean it's for different kind of vacuum i mean if we uh, say that the vacuum is a rough vacuum so rough vacuum mean that it's basically a pressure greater than one millitar i mean rough vacuum basically uh, mean that a pressure uh, i mean greater than one millitar and for creating that kind of vacuum you basically utilize a rotary a wind pump what is rotary wind pump that we will discuss in the coming lecture and to measure that vacuum we normally utilize thermocouple pirani or capacitance manometer gauge i mean these are the kind of the gauges uh, i mean the first is rotary wind pump is for creating uh, this rough vacuum and these are the type of the gauges that that can be utilized for uh, for measuring this kind of the uh, vacuum then we have medium vacuum and medium vacuum lying in the range of 1 millitar to 10 raised to the power minus 8 tar i mean this is the range that we call medium vacuum medium vacuum lying with a pressure range between 1 millitar to 10 raised to the power of minus 8 uh, tar and this kind of vacuum can be uh, produced uh, by utilizing cryo pump diffusion pump turbo molecular pump and iron pump i mean these are the kind of the pump which gave the help of which we can create uh, medium vacuum and the the gauges uh, which are utilized for measuring the uh, medium vacuum are the iron gauge uh, and uh, mass spectrometer i mean these are most common type of the gauges uh, which can be utilized for uh, medium uh, vacuum uh, and uh, the apparatus uh, where we can utilize medium basically uh, wet and seals uh, i mean it's, uh, uh, the seal uh, that has been uh, utilized during the medium vacuum as a wet and seal so high vacuum uh, high to ultra high vacuum uh, is basically why uh, in the range of uh, 10 raised to power minus 8 tor to 10 raised to power minus uh, 10 tor. I mean, this is basically the range for high to ultra high vacuum. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, in this kind of vacuum, all metal seals, I mean, we can utilize uh, all metal seal for uh, such a kind of vacuum range. Uh, and we can utilize uh, back systems. Uh, and uh, we can utilize uh, BA iron gauge uh, and mass spectrometers for measuring this kind of the uh, vacuum and this kind of vacuum can be produced by turbo molecular form iron gauge uh, sorry uh, uh, iron form or ionization form titanium sublimation form and uh, cryo form uh, cryo mean for cryogenic a vapor pressure curl uh, the vapor uh, pressures of most materials uh, follow an Arrhenius equation uh, behavior. Uh, that is, uh, a vapor pressure is equal to uh, P naught, P naught exponential, and two minus g a by uh, uh, k t. That is, most metal must be heated to a temperature well above thousand Kelvin uh, to achieve an appreciable uh, vapor pressures. So for a vapor pressures uh, equal to 10 raised to power minus 4 millibar, the deposition rate is approximately 10 angstrom per second. Organic material have much higher vapor pressure uh, than metals. So care must be taken as to what materials are placed in the vacuum environment. So materials and vacuum, what kind of material should be put in a vacuum or utilized for vacuum or for making the uh, substances that can be utilized in a vacuum. So, our guessing of materials can be uh, the limiting factor in achieving a good vacuum. Uh, that is, it is usually best to use all stainless steel, aluminium, glass, and copper material. I mean, this, these are normally the materials uh, which should be utilized for making the apparatus or making the material that can be utilized in a vacuum environment or uh, that can be utilized uh, in the apparatus uh, uh, that can be utilized for. Or the vacuum environment so uh, we can also utilize uh, elastometer gasket and o-ring uh, should be specifically manufactured for the vacuum uh, applications 
and you should make some uh, extra care should be uh, taken that is you should never use uh, brass zinc or other allies without first looking up uh, the our gassing rate that is should be less than 10 s to power minus 4 watt per meter square let me repeat it again never use uh, the following materials until unless uh, you have uh, a particular uh, requirement for them that is you should never use brass zinc or other allies without first looking up the uh, our gassing rate that is the our gassing rate should be less than 10 to the power minus 4 uh, watt per meter square i mean if you're interested further about uh, this kind of material you better look on the uh, i mean uh, an article uh, that is by or uh, hanlon a uh, user guide to vacuum technology uh, that has been published by well, it's in 1980 uh, uh, it's maybe uh, i mean it's a, it's a very useful article uh, it's been it's contained in this particular uh, books so you better consult this for further details so uh, permeability and other gas uh, sources uh, a sample uh, sorry a single uh, wire and seal on a flange gas wall bonnet or pump inlet will limit the ultimate pressure to uh, greater than 10 raised to power minus 9 millibar I mean again this is the permeability and other gas sources so let me repeat it again uh, a single wire and seal on a flange gas wall bonnet our pump inlet will limit the ultimate pressure to 10 raised to the power minus 9 millibar. Uh, Unbaked system will rarely reach better than uh, 10 raised to the power minus 8 millibar. Trap volumes or uh, virtual leaks will increase pump uh, downtime. Microscopic air leaks can limit the ultimate pressure. The use of a mass spectrometers on a regular basis will help to identify the nature of a gas source. So this is all uh, we have for uh, this lecture. Uh, see you in the next lecture for further details about the vacuum technology that is being accessory and 10 film technology. So till then, bye bye.